everyone, welcome into the At Flippin' Hippo's YouTube channel. I'm Star the Flippin' Hippo. Today is Monday, August 10th, and because it's a Monday, that means it's time for What Sold on eBay! Just like every week, I'm going to take you guys on a walk through our Instagram photos of the week uh, from our shipping to give you an idea of the volume that we do. And then we'll go over to eBay where I have picked out some bolos and some really great bread and butter finds that sold for us to give you guys an idea of items that sell fast or for good money that you can be on the lookout for when you're outsourcing. So let's just jump right on in. You're looking at today's shipping photo. 28 total sales for the weekend. 27 of those were eBay. One was Poshmark. That's a slow weekend for us. We are coming towards the tail end of summer slowdown. And we are coming towards the tail end of folks uh, possibly having spent all of their stimulus checks, coming to the end of the extra money on the unemployment. And the economy is kind of struggling right now due to the shutdown. So between all of that going on, we'll take this as a good weekend, a typical weekend for us on average should be between 30 and 40 so on the low end we're only two sales short of our average sell through rate so uh, with everything else taken into account we're still doing pretty good and we had our highest uh, profit weekend in, in about a month so even though we sold less volume we sold more overall money and profited more this weekend than like the past three or four some high dollar items sold, folks. <laughs> Here's last Monday's 30 items, 29 packages, 26 eBay sales, and 4 on Poshmark. Tuesday we had 12, 10 eBay, 1 Bonanza, and 1 Macari. So you guys can see that cross-posting is definitely worth it. Even if you're only getting one sale here on Bonanza, one there on Macari, four here and there on Poshmark. It does add up, and I teach you guys that all the time. The multiple streams of income absolutely do add up, and they are worth building up, especially when you have extra time on your hands during summer slowdown. Wednesday was really slow. We only had four, uh, two eBay, one Poshmark, and one Grailed. But there again, cross-posting is important because had we not cross-posted on other platforms, we would have only had two sales for Wednesday. We wound up with four, one on Poshmark and one Grailed. Um, Thursday was nine, all eBay sales. And then Friday, the picture here, I forgot to put on Instagram, we had seven total, all eBay sales. So let's jump over to eBay and take a look at the plush first. They are my favorite, so I do always do them first. Uh, we sold this Lucifer cat from Disney Cinderella. We took a best offer on him of $12.64. He was $0.50 cents at the Goodwill, and he shipped first class. Next up, we have a Gans Webkins Whimsy Dragon. I um, tell you guys all the time, Gans Webkins are hit or miss when I find them for $0.50 cents cost of goods. I take the risk and buy them, bring them home, and find out if I got a hit or a miss. Dragons are usually a hit. Uh, for whatever reason, this one didn't comp as high as some dragons. He sold for $11.24. Cost of goods was $0.50. Cents. He shipped first class. Next up, we have this lamb. You guys just saw this lamb in a haul video about two weeks ago. I mentioned Animal Adventure is a very good brand of plush for infants and babies and when they're plush that are meant for infants and babies you can always put lovey as a keyword baby infant soft toy things like that this lamb sold within two days of being listed for $18.74 our cost was 50 cents it shipped first class next up we have a regular old plain angry birds these are the Angry Birds that aren't going to be worth as much and they're going to be longer tail than the more rare or sought after Rio birds, Star Wars. There's a pink female from the movie. Um, these common red ones aren't going to be worth as much or go as fast. But I still picked them up. This one was 50 cents, sold for 10 bucks, shipped first class. 
Next up we have a Nestle Butterfinger Bear. Super cute. He's been around a while. I want to say he was 99 cents at a local thrift store. He did sell for a best offer of $10.79 and shipped first class. Then we have a Yo Gabba Gabba Fufa plush backpack. This has been around forever ever. Like this came from the Benz and we haven't been to the Benz in like two and a half, three years. By weight, it was under a dollar. Finally took a best offer on it of $15.15 just to get it out the door. It did ship first class. And my Christmas dancing moose finally sold. He was, uh, I want to say he was 99 cents at the Goodwill. Brand new in the box, but the box had some damage. So when I have new items like this, I just disclose that they have cosmetic damage or folds and bends or tears or whatever. The moose sold for $25.99. In addition, the buyer also paid shipping and he shipped in a priority large mailing box. All right, not very much, not very many plush sold. We had a total of eight plush sell last week that averages out to about one a day. Um, so we're gonna jump into the clothes now. You guys are looking at LTB 1948 Little Big Men's Jeans. I love men's jeans. I feel like they sell faster than women's and you can always charge a little bit more. Um, my base prices I charge for like my bread and butter jeans that I don't comp anymore. For instance, American Eagle Gap, Old Navy, a lot of them that I charge 21 um, free ship on for women, I do 24 or 25 for men. And then even more if they're bigger sizes or button flies or anything special. I just really like men's jeans, but they're harder to find. I feel like I don't find as many in the wild and women's jeans are plenty but I do pick up men's jeans whenever I find them I do love to flip them this pair cost 99 cents at the Goodwill and sold for $27.49 shipped in a padded flat here we have a ghost dress I've never heard of ghost this is apparently made in England so it's an English brand from England this came out of a wholesale box last summer that we got. Uh, Longtime viewers may remember me referring to that box as the box that kept on giving. It had a lot of really great high-end stuff in it. Some of it is still around, like very, very long tail, still going out the door. Um, that box paid for itself within like the first three things that sold last September. So anything that's still around is just gravy. This dress sold for a best offer of $33.29. It was around $2. Everything was like a little less than $2 averaged out in that wholesale box. And this dress shipped first class. Here's an example of low-end bread and butter jeans I like to pick up that typically ship first class and sell for anywhere from $18 to $20. Bucks. I do that with Hollister. I do that with Aeropostale. These are Love Sick by Hot Topic. Um, these smaller sizes like this, I'll typically pick up and um, for 99 cents, and these were 99 cents. And again, I'll list them anywhere from 18 to 20, um, and then they ship first class. This pair I had shipping on it. It had been around for a while, so I decided to experiment. And instead of doing um, 18 free ship, I dropped the price to um, accommodate the cost of shipping and then added shipping back in. So the buyer paid right at 19 and some change for the pants. Then we have these Tommy Hilfiger um, plus size jeans. These came out of a wholesale box that we just got and everything in that box came out to just over $2 a piece, like four or five cents. So we'll say $2 for ease of math. Anyway, these are uh, Tommy Hilfiger, which isn't that great of a brand, but being that these were capris and were in summer and they were plus size, um, they sold overnight. So I listed these on Friday. Were they on our normal sale, they would have been up for 20 because they got listed on Friday. They went on our weekend sale of 25% off and sold for 18.74 and they did ship in a padded flat. Um, 
I'm okay with them going for that little because they flipped with, you know, over within 24 hours of being listed. And fast flips like that to me are just as important as the higher return on investment. You want you want some stuff that's flipping fast and making you your profits very quickly, and then you want your long tail items um, that are going to make you more money. And you want a mix of both. All right, these are rock and roll cowboy, cowgirl, sorry. Rock and roll cowgirl jeans. Came out of a wholesale lot. This came out of a lot that everything averaged out to a dollar cost of goods per item. And I accepted a best offer of 35 on these and they shipped in a padded flat. Next up, we have a buckhorn men's shirt with a, a cowboy riding a bucking bronco and an American flag. 99 cents at the Goodwill. We picked it up just because the graphics were really neat. Um, not necessarily a great brand. It did take a little bit longer to sell than we thought it would, considering the really good graphics. It is a size large. That could have played into it. Like if it had been an extra large or bigger, it might have sold faster. But it did sell for $24.01 and shipped first class. Here's another good example of men's jeans. These are men's slim black 30-30. And 30 waist is actually kind of small for men's jeans. Um, but these still sold pretty fast. I was pretty impressed. So these were 99 cents at the Goodwill. They sold within like a week of being listed for $22.79 and shipped in a bag flat. Next up we have a tank top, women's tank top from a wholesale lot that averaged out to a dollar for our cost of goods on this. Never heard of the brand, very plain, but it was new without tags. I could tell it was new because it still had its buttons and a little bag attached to the shirt. So I listed it new without tags. It comped pretty high. I was pretty excited when I comped it because again, this was a new to me brand. I did accept the best offer on the top of $25 and it shipped first class. Then we have these women's charter club Capri jeans. I picked these up at the Goodwill for 99 cents and I picked them up purely because they were new with tags and because the print was wild. Um, Charter Club's not typically a brand I'll go after, but when it's only 99 cents and new with tags, I would have grabbed these if they were plain blue jeans, to be honest. The print was a bonus. These sold for a best offer of $20, and I believe they went in a padded flat. No, they went first class, so that's even better. So they sold for 20 and shipped first class. Here's some women's true religion jeans. These are cut off raw hems. Bell bottom flare, the carry on the seat there. Um, I love True Religions. I believe this pair came out of a thread up, which would have made them right at $1.75 for our cost. And I took a best offer on them of $40, and they shipped in a padded flat. I do start all of my True Religion and Miss Me and Silver Jeans right at $50, um, $49.99 to $50.99. And I always expect to be taking a best offer of 45 or 40. Um, I want 40 to 45 for those brands. So that's why I list so high. Because if you list at 45 or 40 and you want to do best offer, you're going to be looking at taking 35 or 30. So I always start these, these really good brands of jeans real high. That way I have room to wiggle. We have this Walt Disney World 2002 coffee mug we got last summer at a yard sale, so it's been around for a bit. I believe it was 25 cents. It may have been 50 cents, but a little bit. I did take a best offer on the mug for $10.76, and then they paid shipping in addition to that. We had calculated shipping on the listing, and the mug shipped in a small priority box. This was also from a yard sale last summer. This one I do remember was 25 cents. Really just cute, small, mini, three inch Disney Cinderella snow globe. I saw it for a quarter, I had to grab it. It did sit around for a very long time, very long tail, but it sold for $18.99, cost a quarter. To me, that's worth it every time. Um, Cause the cost of goods is not enough. To, you know, sitting on a quarter for a year isn't a big deal. 
This shipped in a very small brown eBay box and it went first class. And then we have this Bobby Jones Collection men's polo shirt. This is a size extra large. Um, it's listed as a Cognac yellow on the tags. Cognac. Um, and then it's yellow. And then it has um, it's golf, a golf polo. It's new with tags. It's a really nice shirt. This came out of our wholesale lot that everything averaged out to a dollar. So this was a dollar cost of goods. It took right around a month to sell, not very long. And it did sell for $55. And it shipped first class. And then last but not least, the Coupe de Gras of the week, you guys. These vintage Janko jeans. You may have seen the other two pairs of Janko jeans I sold, um, I want to say a month or two ago. This third pair I actually showed uh, as one of my items in a thrift battle I did over on Primetime Treasure Hunters channel. If you didn't catch that. I did show these Janko jeans as one of my items in the battle. Um, I did have three pairs total of these. The first two pairs sold super duper quick for a best offer of $89.99. 10% off of the $100 I listed them at and wanted. The other two pairs were in better condition and their graphics um, were different. There was one with a uh, crown, like a king's crown, and one with a boxing glove. You guys may remember those. This pair had the flaming skull, which I personally feel like a more popular graphic, but what do I know? But these weren't in as good of shape. You can see the hems. Let me show you. The hems are totally chewed up, destroyed, stained. And I did disclose all this. You can see I put all the pictures in the listing. And then I said, um, the hems are distressed, destroyed, and ripped, and shown in photos. So these still sold for a best offer of $89.99. These sold for the same price as the other two pair, but they just took a little bit longer to go, and that may have been the damage on them. Could have been the size. It could have been not as popular of a graphic, but did finally sell the third and last pair of Janko jeans for $89.99. I'll take a bow now because both Casey and Keith thought I should have listed these for around $50 or $60. Um, no, thank you. Lesson learned, you guys. List high. Um, your stuff is worth what you value it at. And there is a perceived value on your listings. So list high. Aim high. Give yourself room to wiggle for offers. Give yourself room to do sales. Because having offers and having sales on your item all give a, a perceived discount to the buyer. Buyers like to get discounts. Buyers like to get deals. So... Give yourself room to give them the deal. Let them think they got a deal while well, you're still getting the amount of money that you wanted for your items. You, your time, your efforts, everything you put into your business, the items that you source, the gas money you spend, the hours you spend thrifting and listing and measuring, all of that is worth a lot more than I think a lot of you give yourselves credit for. Um, so just a small little soapbox today about listing high. I know I talk about it all the time, but it... It really matters because you need to perceive your own value and the value of your items. You need to be making um, enough money that you have capital to put back into your business to buy more inventory, to build yourself, to build your business, to pay off your debts, to become full-time at reselling, whatever your goals are. All right, guys, let me know down in the comments below what you think and how your sales have been. If you had any highlights or anything exciting from from the week sell, let us know. We love to hear from you. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up before you leave. It really helps the channel. And if you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to the channel. Help us feed a hungry hippo. Don't forget to join our Facebook group. It's called Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod. There's a link down below to join. It's a free to join group full of really great, amazing people from the reselling community. And you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Flippin' Hippos. You can email me at flippinhipposhelp at gmail.com. Until next time, go be productive, go make some money, and as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Y'all are the best. Bye.